So we'll move back to the start with that race looking like it is pretty much done and dusted. It's our heat of the academic club. Oh, sorry, aspirational club for these A's and C's are giving me all sorts of nightmares here. Academic, I've done it again. Aspirational club, Cox's Falls, Mortlake, Anglia and Alpha Boat Club on the Berkshire Station and Nottingham Rowing Club on the Buckinghamshire Station. So about three different clubs in the Nottinghamshire region competing today. This one is the one I'm most familiar with. They always produce very good crews, right up, right down from junior up to senior level. There you go, just see them in your shot there, Nottingham Rowing Club in their distinctive kit. Ooh. Another very, very close, uh, close contact between the blades here, uh, Mortlake and Nottingham. It looks like Mortlake are right across off their station. You have to wonder whether the umpire's going to get involved here because at the moment... They look like they're impeding Nottingham, from my perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd say actually right now it looks like yes. they're both in the centre of the river. As I spoke, they moved across, I think. But, like you say, it did look earlier like it was Mortlake. Um, I can't quite see what the umpires doesn't... Doesn't look like he's getting involved. I think he's left the crews to move apart. Oh, no, he's now warning, warning. somebody. He just stuck his flag in the air, but it appears that he's letting the race well, progress. Well, you, you can just see now Mortlake moving um, quite substantially over towards us and now straightening up again uh, back to the Berkshire station uh, they look like they've got about a lengths lead just under a lengths lead over uh, Nottingham Rowing Club but like you say how much that steering um, and the closeness of the blades there impacted that very difficult to say I'm sure it will have uh, will have had some impact there on them Yeah, so this stage of the race, Mort's Lake, Anglia and Alpha Boat Club. Their stern just tickling the bows of the Nottingham crew who look a little bit disjointed. Maybe disrupted by that earlier problem with the steering. A bit of support from Mort Lake on the bank. I'm sure that will help them move through the middle of the course. You can see from that drone shot, Mort Lake don't look totally comfortable with the steering, but... Um like Richard Phelps umpiring that race did look quite confident um, about keeping control over it there. So obviously has uh, hopes that that'll stay separate and that Mortlake crew will be able to keep on their station. Yeah, I think we've debated to death the, uh, the trials and tribulations of steering a coxless boat down the Henley stretch. It is a tough job. No doubting that. But I think both crews, since their earlier interaction, have moved apart. And Mortlake, just looking at that shot, as they come past our static camera, just looking a little bit longer in the water, keeping the rate high, not allowing Nottingham back into this race. We've got three more heats of the academic aspirational club fours. Ignore the academic bit. The A is giving me serious trouble here. Aspirational Club Falls, Putney Town, Rowing Club and Clandaff of Wales up next. Followed by Vesta and Upper Thames and then to round off Royal Chester A up against St. Andrew Boat Club. This looks like a pretty confident picture here from Mortlake, Anglian and Alpha Boat Club leading in this heat of the aspirational club Coxless Fours over Nottingham Rowing Club. Yeah, I think barring any late disasters, there'll be Mortlake progressing through. We've got another batch of Aspirational Club Fours to follow after a brief interlude from the Championship Singles. But the next race on the course, which is on the state boats now, is Putney Town Rowing Club A on the Berkshire Station and Flandaff Rowing Club on the Buckinghamshire Station.
So just to keep everyone aware, we're running about 10 or 11 minutes behind uh, schedule at the moment, partly because of the, uh, the Coxless Fall that unfortunately visited the booms earlier and the eights that had to restart the race. So good work from the umpires here, keeping racing as well on track as possible. But uh, just if you're looking at your timetables, it's about 10 minutes behind schedule. Just watching Mortlake cross the line. That's a win for them. And they will progress through to what I believe to be the quarterfinals. The aspirational Coxless Falls. So we return to the start for the second heat. Okay, so we have the last uh, few races, the results to give to you now. So it was a win in the championship singles um, for Tideway Scholars over Oxford University Women's Boat Club, followed by a win for Capital Lakes Rowing Club Australia over Wallingford Rowing Club. And then in that last race, you will have just seen a win for Mortlake Anglian and Alpha Boat Club over Nottingham Rowing Club the first race of the aspirational club Coxless Fours. So we're underway, the second heat of the aspirational club fours i'm having to make a mental note every time not to say academic it's aspirational club fours and it's putney town rowing club on the berkshire station and Hlandaf rowing club on the buckinghamshire station so two crews who are not close to each other geographically but at the moment are pretty close to each other on the course but moving apart now bit of trouble steering there from putney town they're vanishing out of the shot which is a bit worrying suggesting that they're tickling the booms and, and they are indeed very close. Zoe exhaling dramatically in the commentary booth here. I think there's going to be an incident here. Indeed. Clandaff now heading straight for the booms. Are they going to correct in time? Oh, they might have just saved themselves. This is among some of the most exciting things that can happen at, at any regatta. And booms make it all the more interesting. But I think both crews actually have corrected. Putney Town still putting a bit of pressure on and being warned now by the umpire to move over. I think they're going to have to correct if they want to stay in this race. But pretty well pretty well matched so far as they come down the course. Well matched, but I'd say that that, uh, that correction from Landaff was due to Putney getting very close to them. So um, as you can see, Putney's going back over, you know, straight back over into the centre. Um, if they haven't been warned yet, I'm sure they will be in a second. Uh, but it is the Landaff crew with a third of a length, perhaps, over Putney as they come down towards the barrier. Putney perhaps playing dodgems as opposed to rowing. But actually, both crews who have covered more distance than perhaps was strictly necessary, just about neck and neck as they come past the commentary tower, commentary central. Looks like a much higher stroke of rating from Putney Town, slightly shorter stroke, whereas Landaff look a little bit longer, a little bit more relaxed. But as you say, Putney coming back, really holding to no more than a few feet there. I actually think Landaff look a bit more relaxed. Shows how much I listen. Apparently Zoe just said that. Well, I definitely think they look a bit more relaxed. 
I'm going to confirm what Zoe said. And actually, it's paying dividends for them because when they came past us, there was about a canvas in it. I think I'd call that half a length now. It almost gives us two starts, doesn't it, when people have steering issues in the openings of a course because once they correct and, and you know the initial drama is over, we then have almost a start again. The race starting again, to absolutely. Who, who is actually the quickest crew. Yeah. I mean, the Slandaff crew looking pretty confident, actually, I think now. Um, you know, difficult to sort of hold your head together when steering's not great for both crews. Um, yeah, like you said, just look a little bit more in control of themselves. I would say that's about, looks like about half a length lead now for Landaff over Putney Town. Yeah, and we're, uh, we're going to keep an eye on that one because I don't think that race has run its course just yet. But the uh, third heat of the aspirational Club Coxus Fours has started. Vesta Rowing Club A on the Berkshire Station and Upper Thames Rowing Club on the Buckinghamshire Station. I love that shot when they come through the shadows of Temple Island. Such a lovely picture. Just this, coming out. This is what makes Henley such a fantastic place to race. You know, it's the course, it's the history, the fact that the spectators are right alongside you at times makes it incredibly exciting. So two clubs who always feature towards the sharp end of a club rowing, Investor and Upper Thames. So just looking up towards the top right-hand corner of your picture at the conclusion of the second heat, which is Putney Town and Landaff. And by no means is that race run its course yet. Still coming down towards the finish line and not an awful lot to choose between them. Putney just looking a little bit ragged as they come up towards the line, but holding it together and actually putting a lot of pressure on Landaff. But will it be enough? Yeah, I think, like we said earlier, that relaxed style from Landaff, just a little bit more confidence in what they're doing. And I think that's why they're going to be crossing the line ahead here uh, of Putney Town. That next heat coming up past us now. And the Vesta Rowing Club look to have about half a length of clear water on Upper Thames at the moment. Yeah, certainly in control of this one. I always think it's remarkable that the winning crew always looks more relaxed, but I'm sure if you've got the two crews out paddling, probably technically they both look as good as each other, but it's, it's amazing that the winning crew can always exude this air of confidence and the losing crew just don't look like they've got it quite together. To be fair to Upper Thames, this race is not over yet. They're still just about in contact with Vesta. But I think it's going to take quite the effort to uh, overcome Vesta, who have now started to move into the middle of the river a little bit. Nice and long from Vesta catching the boat out front and moving it through. watching them I feel they've got another gear if they need it yeah they definitely look like they're not right at their max here um, which is perhaps not surprising given that they have a pretty commanding lead here over uh, the local crew from Upper Thames Rowing Club well not only a commanding lead but a congested schedule to actually get through the rounds I mean we've, this is the heat they've got a quarter final a semi-final and a final to contend with if they want to lift the trophy on Sunday so I suppose if you've got clear water or you know, substantial clear water you do want to wind down a little bit and give the legs a break yeah i think so it's a long weekend of racing especially you know with the weather like this hot you've got to look after yourself make sure you're staying hydrated and eating enough so yeah definitely not worth spending any extra energy than you need to worth noting that the uh Previous heat to this between Landaff and Putney Town was won by Landaff by half a length. So in the end, our predictions proved correct, Zoe. It was the uh, karma 
perhaps more experienced crew who prevailed. So they'll progress through to the quarterfinals. And they'll be joined by Mortlake, Anglia and Alpha Boat Club, who won by three lengths over Nottingham Rowing Club in the uh, first of these four heats. And I think, barring any late disasters, it's going to be Vesta who joined them. So we move on to the fourth and final for this batch of the uh, heats of the aspirational club fours. It's Royal Chester A on the Berkshire Station and St Andrew Boat Club of Scotland on the Buckinghamshire Station. So many Scottish crews at this regatta. And every year, they get better. Edinburgh, Glasgow, St Andrews, they all produce top, top quality crews. And I think that's stemmed from a lot of investment into rowing up there, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and actually success breeds success. Absolutely. Edinburgh in particular have a very, very promising um, program up there, producing some great crews, both on the women's side and the men's side. Um, but this race here uh, does look like Royal Chester with the early lead, although they were just being warned as they came towards the end of the island and are still being warned to move back onto their station as they come up towards us in the commentary box. Oh. Well, I think Royal Chester might actually be slightly behind here. It's very deceiving because we've only got Royal Chester in our shot. <laughs> um, but at the moment, I think they're being led by St. Andrew Boat Club. Yes, I was completely wrong. Best not to listen. Don't say that. Put us all out of a job. <laughs> but yeah, it is St. Andrew Boat Club on the Buckinghamshire station making their way down in what is a glorious afternoon here in Henley, the seat of the Oxfordshire countryside, one of the world's premier regattas. No doubt about it, the development of the regatta over the last few years has been nothing short of exceptional. And now we see some of the finest female crews in the world competing on the Henley stretch. For honours on Sunday afternoon, in St Andrew Boat Club, putting in a pretty good show so far. They've got, oh, I'd say that's clear water, Zoe. Yep. Maybe a quarter of a length of clear water over the crew from Royal Chester Rowing Club who, uh, again, have moved out a little bit into the centre of the river. Mr Pinson keeping a watchful eye on proceedings. He's going to be a busy man over the next two weeks with his duties at Henley Royal as well. So I don't think he's going to have too much to do in this race, provided both crews stick to their station. St Andrew Boat Club in control at the moment. actually on, on top of their uh, four that's performing very well here. I think they were finalists in the Britannia Challenge Cup last year, if I'm not mistaken, losing out to a crew from Oslo. So a lot of pedigree, a lot of history at the club. And those girls staying true to that reputation. Be interesting to see if they can continue to move away in the middle part of the course. It's very rare that a crew can actually come back from this sort of deficit, especially in a side-by-side -side race, a matched race like this. But never say never. Just looking back at the uh, previous heat of the uh, aspirational Coxus Fours, and it was a win for Vesta Rowing Club by two and a half lengths over Upper Thames. So it will be Vesta, Clandaff, and Mortlake, Anglia, and Alpha who progressed through. And as we look at the shot here, I think St. Andrew will be joining them. <laughs> 